Here you can see the angle of insertion of the stylet. It goes into the vein and then parallel down to the dog's leg as the catheter is advanced. Then a temporary plug will be placed here and the half strip of tape sticky side up is wrapped sticky side up wrapped completely around the catheter so you have a good fixation of tape to the catheter and then tape to the leg. So I want to show you how I place an IV catheter. One of the things I do when I run the clippers is we're trying, if you imagine that these clippers are just running along the skin and you're not actually touching the skin, you want to try to remove the hairs without even touching the skin. So a lot of times I see people trying to get that last little bit and they start digging like this and then you're, you're scraping the skin and you can cause a lot of irritation, especially when we go to the next step of using our scrub. I do at least three scrubs, but I do it until they're clean. It's pretty clean. So I like to focus my soap in the middle here where I'm going to place my catheter. So I'm making a very tiny sterile field. But the catheter comes like this. I unpack it. And then what we have is it's all covered in a sheath to keep it sterile. So when you open it, before you touch the dog, I like to remove this because sometimes that thing springs out of there and you lose. Make sure that the catheter is sitting on here and then this cap as well. Sometimes it's very tight so I like to loosen that off and make sure it's ready before I get it in the leg. So if we can, I don't know if you can see that needle. It's so small but you can see there's probably three millimeters of metal stylet exposed before the catheter tip. So I've got to go in the vein at least three millimeters for that catheter to be able to thread. And then when I put this thing in, I'm going to put the stylet into the vein. And then I'm going to try to see the vein. I don't know if I bounce this vein. If Can you see that on camera? We're standing up nicely. And sometimes it's, sometimes it's, she's got a firm vein, but sometimes it rolls in under the skin. If you move it like that, you can get a visualization of where it is. You see the vein, and I try to get right into the center of the vein and thread it up the vein just to touch. And see, I got a little blood back, and I think it went right in the vein, and it's still oozing, but I think I went too far. So I'm going to pull it back, just a hair. And if you can see this blood, now it's flowing nicely. So I think I'm in the center of the vein. And I'm going to hold this stylet very still and move the catheter up along the stylet and so that's fully threaded and I'll, I'll pull the stylet out if we, she's holding that just so it won't bleed back and then I put this cap on here and if she lets her thumb up it should fill up the, it's in the vein so we got nice flow we know we're there so that's great so one of the tr tricks with this stylet is we it, it, in a perfect world you never never push it back into the catheter. You always, when you pull it out, you're pulling it out. Because when you try to thread this back up, if the catheter's halfway in, you try to thread that stylet back in, you can puncture the cath catheter or lacerate a piece of the catheter off while it's inside the dog. You don't want to do that. So then I, I do this tape wrap. Everybody has their own system, but I do one underneath here and I do it around and I come around here snug on the dog's leg so that the skin, when the skin moves, the catheter will be attached to it. And then I put, go around the catheter and I pinch this to the catheter because I think this is the most important part right here that's holding the catheter to the tape, it's holding it to the dog's leg. And then I go snug around here. And another point that will come evident is I leave myself a little gap here so that any, th any port that I want to put on there, I can have room to, sh to thread it on there. And so if Savannah, if you hold your hand back here, then I like to, until I get that catheter in the vein, a lot of times I'm paranoid. I hold it with this hand so she doesn't pull back and jerk it out. But if you have your assistant holding her, you can take your hands off and then you can use both hands. <clears throat>
And I've, for example, in this case, I'm just putting a catheter cap, so I will try to occlude this catheter a little bit just, just to keep it from being messy. And I'll put this cap on here, and I've left myself enough room for the threads to screw on there. Now I screw this on there nice and tight because I don't want that to come out. I don't want it to leak. And with the dog recovering from surgery and flipping around, it's hard to mess with that. So basically make it a permanent attachment by really putting it on there. And so then I like to cover the haired portion of the skin and put another piece of tape over here to for insurance. Then we'll cover this in vet wrap and I'll give a little uh, flush to to prevent clotting and she's getting ready for surgery. Yes. Yeah. Here's the vein. You see the vein? Is it bouncing? Mm -hmm. Right there. Go in this one. A little flash, I went too far and pulled back just a hair, I think. It's not bleeding well, but this is a small gauge catheter, so we got some blood coming. I think we're there. So I'm gonna try to work it up. Let up and see if we're in there. I like to always, yep, good. So, same tape over again. I just do it the same way every time, that way my fingers get good at it. Famous last words. Okay, done. That'd be pretty good, like three examples. So this one is a basset hound and she's got a little curly vein. It's easy to see on the edge right here as it curls around. You can feel it. All that again. And if we squeeze our foot and pump it back up a little bit, then you can find it here and you follow it on up. I don't know if you can see it. It bulges to the left or to the right when I touch it there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold that vein is curling around this way. I'm going to hold it with my thumb here so it doesn't go anywhere. I have something to press against. And I'm going to tense the skin towards me a little bit. Wait for the blood. Sometimes it's there and it's missed it. So there it is. I felt it pop. It's coming in. It's flowing. I feel confident about the way it went in. So I'm going to just extend that catheter in. Let's see if it's in there. Get up. Yep, it's in there. So the same way. This is how I always do it just because my muscle memory tells me to do it. I tape them the same way each time. I like to get a good connection here and I like to leave myself a little space here. I come up here, uh, especially these dogs that have loose skin, I like to, I feel like if this, you got two wraps of tape around the skin, it's, you got one unit, the skin and the catheter is all together and so it's not going to pull out. So I'll put on IV, so we'll... I like to lock this in tight because I'm not going to access it again anyway. I'm going to tape it up. Again, make this all one unit. And then we'll put one more wrap on here. There we go. Now we're going. Okay, so I can see my vein running right here. I've already scrubbed. What I'm gonna do is put my thumb of my non-dominant hand right against that vein so that if that vein wants to roll, I trap it between the needle and my thumb. I go in the vein, in the skin, in the vein. I get a flash. I'm gonna feed just a hair more. Then I'm gonna come off. Joy's gonna stop that. I'm gonna put my temporary cap in. Now this is a different taping method that you've seen in previous videos. I've torn a piece of tape in half. I flip it sticky side up and slide it under the catheter. Then I fold the sticky side down on itself and tape it around the arm. So that's the piece that holds my catheter in. I'm going to take my next big piece of tape 
and make a small tear in the end. I'm gonna feed that up under my catheter and that protects the hair from going into the catheter. And I'm gonna tape around the catheter again for extra protection. Now you can see where my cap is gonna go. There's no fur under there. So I'm gonna take my temporary cap off and put my injection cap on. And then I'm gonna put one more piece of tape around that cap to secure it in. Yep, you see it right there. It's a little bit darker than the rest of the skin around it. I always put my non-dominant thumb up against that vein and then I come in from the opposite side with my needle so if it rolls I trap it. Into the skin I have a flash in my hub. I'm going to advance just a little bit more. Then I'm going to press my catheter off my needle. Joy's going to hold that off. I'm going to put a temporary cap in so that we don't get blood everywhere. I'm pushing that catheter in with my thumb while I hold the paw with my, the rest of my hand. I take half a piece of tape, I slide it under the catheter, sticky side up, and then double it over on itself and tape it around into the arm. That's going to hold that catheter in place. I take a full piece of tape and I make a small tear in the end. I slide that up under the catheter and that's going to protect me from getting any fur in the catheter. And then I'm going to roll the, tap, the top around again so that we secure that catheter in again. On this patient we're going to hook up some fluids. And so instead of putting an injection cap on, I'm going to take this cap off and hook up my fluid line. Now I'm going to make a stress loop. So to do this, I just simply pull up a piece of the extension set and fold it on itself. I take another piece of tape and I secure that stress loop and I go over that junction with the catheter. So that holds the stress loop in and protects the junction as well. Here you can see the angle of insertion of the stylet. It goes into the vein and then parallel down to the dog's leg as the catheter is advanced. And a temporary plug will be placed here. And the half strip of tape, sticky side up, is wrapped. Sticky side up, wrapped completely around the catheter. So you have a good fixation of tape to the catheter and then tape to the leg.